Hi there, in this video we'll be looking at how we can use a very early version of Ionic 4 with Vue.js. So before getting into it, I want to install the Vue CLI with npm install Vue-CLI-G. This will allow us to use Vue inside of our command line. After which we can make a new Vue project using Vue init based on the webpack-simple template and I'll be calling this i-vue. It appears I should have installed the Vue CLI because there is a new version available, but never mind. We can create the project called iView. We can simply make the description an Ionic and view project. The author is me, and of course, at this moment in time, I'm not too concerned about using SAS. As you can see, we now have i-vue generated, so we can cd into that. And then we can run npm install to install our core dependencies. Awesome, let's run npm run dev and at the same time open this up inside of Visual Studio Code using code dot. So if you've ever seen a Vue.js application before, we have a very standard welcome to your Vue.js app screen. And then of course our directory structure is very simple. We have an index.html, a webpack config, and everything to do with our app is inside source. The first thing I'm going to do is include Ionic Core. Now, like I said, this is a very early version, so expect a lot to change as time goes on. Underneath our build script, I'm going to import from unpackage.com slash at Ionic and I want core at 0.02-20 and then we want dist Ionic.js. That gives us access to Ionic core. Like I said, it's very early, but we can use a lot of the common web components. Now, if you're asking yourself at this point, what is Ionic 4 and Ionic core? Well, it's all built on Stencil. Stencil is a web component compiler that makes vanilla web components and libraries like Ionic, especially as this is built by the Ionic framework team, they can take Ionic and make it not linked to Angular. So it will still work with Angular, but we can use it in other frameworks such as Vue. So we've added Ionic core to our project. The first thing I want to do is head over to app.view and I'm going to get rid of everything inside of our div id is equal to app. And inside of ion app, I want to make an ion page. And in here we can define a header like usual. So if you've ever used Ionic before, you'll know that we can define a header and a toolbar. Inside of the toolbar, I'm simply going to say Ionic view. And if we save the file and take a look in our application, let's remove all of the styling. You'll notice that we start getting these errors in the console and that's saying that this is an unknown custom element. So we have to tell Vue that we want to use these web components inside of our application and that can be done over in our main.js file. So we need to say view.config and we want to use the ignored elements array and we want to pass in ion-app ion-page do the same for header and the toolbar let's save our file and our config will update and we'll no longer have these errors the next thing i want to do is go back to index.html and i also want to add a meta tag that allows us to basically scale the viewport to the device width. You'll see this in a lot of HTML templates and essentially this just allows us to responsively size our elements. The final thing we need to do is give our ion page the class of show-page. When we do that, our page should appear here on screen. And as you can see, we then have Ionic view, but it looks a bit strange. This isn't the title element that we come to expect when developing Ionic applications. And that's because we need to wrap this in an ion dash title. So at this point in time, we've wrapped it in an ion title, but 
there's something else we need to do because we're using a new web component. We have to go back to our main.js and add it to the ignored elements. That way view is not going to think that this is a view component. It's going to recognize then that it's a web component and it's going to appear on screen. So what's next? Let's display an ion content inside of our ion page. We'll then take a list, we'll get some information from a server and we'll display this list on screen. Before getting too far into this, I want to install Axios. So let's run npm install Axios. And this allows us to get some data from a REST API. So inside of our app.view, let's scroll down to our script. And we can import Axios from Axios. And then inside of our created lifecycle, I want to run axios.get. And then we can classify the URL as HTTP JSON placeholder dot typeacord.com slash users. This is a standard test REST API, and it gives us some data that we can display on screen without any setup. We can then hook into the dot then event, get the response, and assign the response to this dot users. So we can say this dot users is equal to response dot data. Let's add a users array into our data like so. And now we should then be able to display these users on screen with V4. So back up to our template. Inside of our ion content, let's make an ion list. That list will have an item and a label. We'll run V4 and we'll say user of users. So that will be the list of users that we get from our API. And we can bind the key to the user.id. Awesome, so now we can iterate over this list of users. We can bind to the user.name, so we'll display the user's name on screen. And we want a full label. So let's add the full attribute. And you'll notice as soon as we save this file, we get our list on screen. We also will get some errors when we refresh. So let's go through and add the different elements. So these elements are things like ion-content, ion-list, ion-item, and ion-label. When we save the file and we refresh, we should have no errors in the console, but we have an application that uses ionic web components built with stencil inside of our view application. What a time to be alive. We can also, at the same time, change this to be iPhone 6 Plus, and we get the same iOS view that we've come to expect with our Ionic applications. So I hope you can see the power of this. It's not limited to view. We could have done this in straight JavaScript. We can do it in React. We can do it in Angular 1. So many different use cases. But we have the same power, or will have the same power, when Ionic 4 is released without the overheads of being tied to Angular, because you've got to understand while Angular is a great framework and I use it every day, the success of the Ionic Framework project would be so limited to the success of Angular. And I do believe that Angular is honestly as popular as it is because of Ionic to a certain degree. But when I'm using Vue or working with a team that doesn't want to use Angular, but also wants to target mobile, I can see Ionic 4 and the web components being a great component to that. Are you excited for Ionic 4 and the implications of being able to use this inside of Vue, React, and much more? Let me know inside of the comment section below if you are, and if you're not, also join in and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated for more content. Don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more premium courses and free content. And until next time, I'll see you soon in my next video.